I'd like, I'd like to briefly talk about escape velocity. So as, you, as you've seen in the previous videos about Newton's laws and Newton's universal law of gravitation, that the force of gravity depends on the mass of the two objects and the distance between them. Which means that if you have a space shuttle orbiting around Earth and neither one is changing their mass, there should not be any change in the amount of force, so it should be moving on um, in its same orbit. Now, there's a specific speed at which that space shuttle has to travel in order to have a perfectly circular orbit. That's known as the circular velocity. If you add speed or increase the speed of that rocket, then its orbit will turn from a circular orbit into an elliptical orbit, which we can see is the change between the blue space shuttle orbiting Earth and the gray space shuttle orbiting Earth. Now, if you add enough speed to an object that's orbiting another larger object, then it can reach or exceed the escape velocity of that object. So in this example, if the space shuttle reaches a fast enough speed, it'll reach the Earth's escape velocity and therefore be able to fly away out into space, maybe to another planet or the moon or something like that. So that can be shown in the orange to red space shuttles there. So at sea level, the escape velocity is 11 kilometers per second, or approximately 40,000 kilometers per hour. So that's roughly how fast our space shuttles have to go in, or our spacecraft, the space shuttle's not working, in, is not in existence anymore, or spacecraft have to launch faster than that in order to be able to get into orbit. Now, once they get into orbit, they can change their speed. Um, and uh, because they're at a higher distance, further distance away from the center of the Earth, they can slow down because the force of gravity between the space shuttle and Earth is now lessened. So it takes much more energy to launch a spacecraft than it does to maintain its orbit. Now let's take a look at how mass plays a role into this. So I have an old flash animation. And this flash animation is very exaggerated. So we have Earth, we're looking down onto the North Pole. So you can see sort of in the lower left side of Earth, you can see North America. The other side, that is the continent of Asia and Europe there, and sort of the upper right-hand corner. We have some very large mountains that are very exaggerated. Mountains are not that tall compared to the size of the Earth. And one of them happens to have a cannon on top, which again, very exaggerated, not real, but it'll allow us to prove some points. So up at the top, I'm able to change some of the parameters, such as speed that the cannonball launches out of the cannon and mass, the mass of the cannonball that we're launching. So if I have my cannonball at one kilogram and I launch it at one meter per second, we can see that that cannon, cannonball, will eventually crash into Earth. Now I can go through and play with these parameters. I can increase the speed up to 15 kilometers per second, and I can increase the mass to 100 kilograms. So let's take a look at what each of these does. So let's increase the mass to say 10 kilograms. We'll keep the speed the same at this point. So if I fire this one, I see that it landed in the exact same spot as the last one. So increasing the mass from one kilogram to 10 kilogram did nothing. Let's increase it up to 50. Try this again. Launch, same thing. All the way up to 100, reload, launch. Every single time, regardless of the mass, if I launch a, launch a cannon with, at a speed of one kilometer per second, it's going to land in the same spot. So let's go through and see what happens when I start to change the speed. So if we're at one kilometer per second now, let's go to five. We'll keep the mass at 100 for the moment. So now when I launch this one, it's going much, much further, about twice as far as it did before, but it still does crash into the Earth. So at least we've got some improvement now. We'll increase the speed to, say, 10, reload, launch. So at 10 kilometers per second, it's no longer going to hit the Earth. In fact, it's orbiting. It's orbiting the Earth 
Um, it'll take 294 minutes for it to orbit Earth, or in this simulation, just 24 seconds. So I have not hit my escape velocity, but I've gone more than my circular velocity. So let's backtrack this a little bit. We'll reload and see if we can find that circular velocity or as close to it as the simulation will give us. Let's try seven kilometers per second. So seven kilometers per second, not fast enough. We'll try eight. So at roughly eight kilometers per second, I have gotten close to launching my cannonball. Um, that must be close to the circular velocity because it very much looks like this cannonball is um, orbiting in a circle. Now we still have the mass at 100 kilograms. Let's drop the mass down to one and see if it does the same thing. And yes, it has the exact same period of 85 minutes. So again, the mass of the cannonball did not, map, did not play any role in the velocity needed to have it orbit the Earth. So any faster than this eight kilometers per second, I will go into that elliptical orbit that we saw when we were at 10 kilometers per second. So the next one we'll try is 11. Let's see if we can find the escape velocity of this cannonball. So at 11 kilometers per second, it's still gonna orbit. It's gonna take longer, but it does say that it will come back. So we'll have to wait 188 seconds in the simulation, which I'm impatient. I don't wanna wait that long. So we'll go ahead and stop it and try 12 kilometers per second. So at 12 kilometers per second, that is now fast enough that my cannonball will escape into space. Let's go through and see if this changes with mass again. Again, with a 100 kilogram cannonball, it also um, escapes into space. And we'll do one last thing and just double check that at 11 kilometers per second, the 100 kilogram cannonball does not escape into space, just has a very elliptical orbit. And yes, we can see the simulation tells me it'll take 2,350 minutes for this cannonball to orbit Earth or approximately 188 seconds in the simulation, which I do not feel like waiting for. So hopefully this uh, quick video uh, has illustrated how speed and mass do or do not relate to the um, orbital velocities of an object, both the circular velocity and the escape velocity. Now, if we were to do this experiment on a different planet, our numbers would be different, but we now know enough utilizing Newton's law of, universal law of gravitation, that speed is the only thing that matters in this, um, uh, in these simulations to be able to figure out how fast an object needs to go in order to orbit or to escape um, its planet.